Wow, that I actually get to choose my weapons this time rather than... By the way, here's a weapon. I suppose you only appear to be calm. Thank you, sir. Now I've got lots of health. Woo! <clears throat> no, I don't head height. It's been since about six months after the game came out that I played it. <clears throat> Maybe I can parry with the Faustian. Maybe. Maybe. Ezio. If the camera stopped trying to be so helpful, this wouldn't be so bad. Ooh, hey! Statue! Found one. Nice. Bing! Jupiter statue acquired. Treasure! Ooh, there's another one. Nice! Yeah, it has been a little while, Spoon. That's okay. Things come up for people. They get tired of me watching... Tired of watching me play one game. But that you came back is the important thing, so... It's good to see you again. Hey, a feather. Look at me collecting things. I don't even have a map. Telling me where the things are, I mean. Let's see. Assassin's Creed 1 was intended to have the crossbow. Ellie. Huh. I guess I never saw that in any of the special features they added to the game. That they actually took something out. Okay. I'll admit, though, I don't really notice the game really having been lacking when not having the crossbow. Because the game was a lot of fun. Except for the flags. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. I think everybody agrees about the flags. Hey, people like collecting things, right? Let's throw 500 of them into the world. Although, thinking about collecting them, think about the guys whose job it was to hide 500 flags in that world. Hey, uh, Bob. We got a job for you. Um, see, the, the higher-ups, the, the, the boss decided uh, that the game needs to not only be assassinations, but a collect-a-thon, so... Yeah, um, here's 500 flags. Good luck. Infinity. Oh. Hello, Feather. Well, aren't you a funny monkey? Don't call me a monkey. I'm a looter. <laughs> okay, that's three statues and a couple feathers. There's another one.
That's an awkward place for a statue. Alright, that's half of them. Fortunately, no one here finds me an odd person, so I can just run around on the rooftops having fun. In fact, I haven't seen a single guard, which is nice. Oh, hey. <laughs> There's actually some on ground level. That's number five. Three more. Fortunately, they do shine, so it makes it a little easier to find them. Hmm. Looks rather risky, really. Hey, more treasure. <coughs> oh, right, that affinity. Yeah. It's been a while since I played Dark Souls 2. But yes, the the homing hex mass or whatever you want to call it. I was like, why do I hear people killing each other? Because they are. Well, let's see if I can put any of these statues down. Nope. Can't put those down. How about over here? Nice. Got those. Ooh. 2,000. Nice. Loot. Diana and Apollo. Together but never touching. One sleeps while the other rises, yet both watch over us. For those of you not familiar with your Roman gods, I believe that's, uh, the sun and moon. If I recall. <clears throat> oh yeah, absolutely. 1800 damage from four affinity orbs. And those things can be a bitch to dodge if you don't know what you're doing. More loot! Man, I guess it's good I went and bought all that stuff, because damn! Getting the money all back now. Let's see. Jupiter and Minerva. Here sits the king of all Olympus, and beside him stands wisdom to guide his rule. Yes, Jupiter, the Roman version of Zeus. Minerva, I don't remember. Maybe Hera. Alright, I got one more I can put down somewhere. Ah, Poseidon, or Neptune, right. Neptune and Roman, Poseidon and Greek. Two brothers rest here. One resides fathoms deep, the other at the end of time. Cool. So, I was right. I found five statues. Okay, it was Hera? Cool. Oh yeah, um, how is the PvP in Dark Souls 2 going in terms of lag stabs? Have people started to learn how to gain lag stabs? Like, are they have they figured out the timing? So I know backstabs for people who are rolling in front of them, where you're supposed to have iframes. Uh, 
Okay, Hades. Yeah, God of the Underworld. Ah, uh, that's true. Jesters, which I still think is one of the ugliest damn things in the game. It's like, they intentionally made it ugly, so that way people wouldn't wear it, and then they gave it invulnerability to backstabs, so now everybody wears it. Mars and Venus. So, Aphrodite and... Someone. God of Rage. Oh, Ares? So Ares and Aphrodite then? Yeah, I guess that was always my problem with Dark Souls 2. I just could not bring myself to use the the jackass builds. Uh, the ones that were going to give you so much advantage that almost to make it not fun. Not that any one build is more fun than the other. It's all really completely perspective-based. Like, whatever you find fun, you find fun, so... Did I check up here? Yeah, I did. I ran through here and got treasure. Okay. I'm missing two statues. Just two. I wonder if the last two are not inside the main part of town. That'd be interesting. Like maybe one's actually out in the stables and another one's out in the fields. I don't know. I honestly thought that they'd all be like on the rooftops and whatnot and then I saw one not on the rooftops. About to say, that sounds suspiciously like an item. Ezio, seriously, stop being a moron. I just noticed the fountain. That's cool. Well, that's kind of what I'm talking about, Flying Pig. I mean... Like I was saying, I mean, this is completely subjective. What I find fun versus what anyone else finds fun. To me, PvP is about the fight. So if you can one-shot somebody, it's no longer a fight, it's just a race who can get out their one-shot attack first. What I ended up enjoying towards the end there, before it got too bad, 
was actually having the fight, trying to outthink your opponent. Trying to get the upper hand on him in multiple occasions, that there was actually a little bit of back and forth. Not just, hey, I got the backstab and I win. But, yeah, completely subjective. Unfortunately, my opinion seems to be in the minority. Lots of people seem to be enjoying the, how fast can I kill this guy and move on to the next one and do it again. To me, that sounds like a recipe for quick burnout, or maybe not burnout, but quickly getting bored with something. Because it's like, how many times can you have instant gratification before it becomes... Too repetitive. At least when you ha could have a somewhat drawn out fight, I'm talking like maybe a minute or two, not, you know, the 10 seconds of a one shot. You actually have some chance for some variety and some interesting things can occur. But when you're talking about the 5 to 10 second one shots, how long does it take you to usually find a world to invade in some cases? I know for me, especially if you want to do uh, if you wanted to do blues, it could take you five minutes to find a fight. I wouldn't want to find take five minutes for to find the fight, have it done in five seconds, and then have five more minutes waiting. Uh, yeah, I suppose that's another option. Change the change your build up so that way it's a different style of attack. And I can definitely understand grinding your way through some of the uh, the covenants, so you don't care how fast, you don't care how you get the win. You just want the win, and then maybe once you finish grinding your way through the covenant, you can go back and enjoy PvP the way it was. I don't know. More intended to be, I would think. Alright, let's see... That last statue... Anywhere around here. Yeah, red invasions are definitely faster in Dark Souls 2. Blues are the ones that were the most frustrating, which is why I ended up trying to take my time and enjoy everything there was to... Everything that there was in, in a PvP fight. The faster it was over, the faster you were back to just dicking around, waiting for the next attempt at an invasion to fail before you could attempt again and fail and attempt again and fail and yada yada yada. You know, something that just struck me? There is no stamina meter in this game. That's amazing. Curious where I'm gonna find the guy to sell me a map, though. And I'm kinda surprised there was no feather or anything back here. Just, you know, random collectible. I guess the horse does not like the the uh, the rough terrain or the tight turns. But yeah, I mean, again, going back to the whole PvP thing, that that's why I if I do ever go back to do Dark Souls PvP, it's gonna be after there's been enough people who've taken their time and got their chance to go and do that 
covenant grinding thing, so that way you actually get back to the people who are more interested in fighting, as opposed to winning. Because, yeah, winning's great, but it's really not everything. That's not where all the fun lies. I mean, there's learning, and then, and then there's victory and stuff like that. I don't know. Just my thoughts. I don't imagine there's a lot out here, but since we're here, might as well do some exploring. Hey, I said jump that fence. Fine. Jump this fence? Oh. Walls that I can't take my horse past. Go figure. But I thought I saw something sparkly. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, as far as Covenant of Blood grinding out for the the rank 3 aura, yeah, that's arena only. But the the blue bros. Victory is anywhere. Count. Which is kind of nice. Huh, <laughs> that's a wall. No, it's a gate. Oh, cool. Wait, are you following me? You're not even really my horse. Oh. All right then, I guess you're my horse now. So, let me guess. That house is just there for decoration. Well, alright then. Don't suppose any of you out there might happen to know where that last statue is. So I'll go get it right now, we can actually get on with the questing. Not that all this money isn't nice. Might actually go buy some more uh, armor. See, last time I rode around here, I swear I heard a chest. A sparkly chest. I got the feather, but I th Thought I heard a chest as well. <clears throat> yeah, I I guess I can understand that flying pig. The arena is its own place. If you were doing that for invasions, I'd be well, I might complain a little more. What was always funny to me is that I always told people during my Dark Souls 2 streams that I was avoiding the arena because it just contained people who were grinding for rank. They're like, no, 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 the arena, that's like where the most honorable blood bro PvP is. I don't know what you're talking about. It's like, have you been there? 
Or am I just going at the wrong times? Yeah, that's definitely the hard part about Blood Bros. A win is plus one, a loss is minus one. And once you start losing, sometimes it can go bad fast. Like, you just, you keep losing. That's the one thing I've always hated about collectible things. The last, like, 5% are always the hardest to find. Like, either the last one or the last 10, depending how many they are. Because they're so spread out and hidden that you just... You feel like you've looked everywhere. But there's always that one place you never looked, because you're like, Oh no, I've totally been there. But you're always wrong. Because that's where it is. Now I'm just trying to figure out where that place is for me right now. Excuse me. And now that it's in daytime, things aren't going to be so sh sparkly shiny. Yeah, like I swear I've been here because that box is open. I guess I have. Yeah, there was loot. Nope, oh, nope, not here. This looks like somewhere where I picked up loot earlier. I am looking for the eighth one now. No one cares. It is the last one. Oh, uh, there it is. Sweet! Bing! Achievement unlocked! Myth Maker. Ah, ah, ah. Alright. Let's go drop off this Ares statue. Or I guess Mars. To the, uh, Romans. Cool. Now we can actually go get the horse. Here's hoping the last one's something super special. Nope. Just 8,000... I want to keep calling them Franks, but we're in Italy, so that doesn't make sense. Franks are French. Anybody happen to know what this currency's called? Alright, well I'm definitely going to the blacksmith and getting some upgrades for this armor. Or at least buying armor that I don't already that I'm not already wearing. Not upgrades, but new armor. Let's see, that's one, three, four health. Four, seven, nine and a half resistance. Nice. And this is upgraded greaves, so I'll be holding off on that. Weapons. Plus one to speed, minus one to deflect. Minus one to speed, plus one to deflect. Well, it's a hammer, yeah. I don't know, Flying Pig. I would imagine the whole, f the way a lot of people have probably handled getting their 500 wins in the arena is they and a friend hook up and make sure that they somehow win every fight, or you know, they get a group of people together. I I don't know, man. I don't know. Florins, thank you, Leo. So we have 10,935 florins. Okay, for a second there, with all this Dark Souls 2 talk, I thought that said a cyan sword. <laughs> Parry with the hammer. It'd be so funny if there was, like, 
a legitimate parry system, not just the counter-attack thing. Oh yeah, look at that. We fancy. Okay, let's actually get the horse for real and move on. Where am I actually going? Oh, I'm not supposed to get on a horse and head to Tuscany. Gotcha. I'm actually supposed to go out. There we go. And we take the fork to Tuscany. Okay, so that's cool. This actually is now our base of operations. I like it. <clears throat> Are you sure you want to go to Tuscany? Well, the game's telling me to, so yeah. Pretty sure. Armor gets damaged. Yes. Oh, I see. Black square means you've got your health, but you're missing the armor, I guess. Oh, what is that? I don't recognize that symbol. Oh, okay. That's the symbol of the place we just came from. Gotcha. <laughs> I guess I'll be using that for distractions at some point. You know, something I never figured out. What is those sword guys? Mercenaries. Okay. I can hire them to go wreak some havoc, I suppose. Hey, Drago. Or Andre. I will remember one day. How's it going? Off to fair Tuscany, everyone. Oh, wow. We have guards again. Responsibility. Vieri troubles you because of me. <laughs> Vieri troubles us because he's a Templar, and we are assassins. Either way, I wish to help. Va bene. Then listen close. First, we must find a way inside the city, though it seems Vieri expects us. He has sealed the gates and sent his men to guard them. Fortunately for us, the city is larger than his host. The southern gate suffers for it. So this is where we'll strike, Pronti. You want to help him kill things? Yes, let's do that. All right, follow Mario. Wow, look how much health I have from all my armor. It's so nice. All right, Ezio. Here's how it is going to work. My men and I will distract the guards. Once we have engaged them, get yourself over the wall and find a way to open the gate. Take these throwing knives. Use them to dispatch the archers. I'm ready when you are. Then let us begin. <laughs> Insta-night, yeah. 
Well, it sounds cool, because, you know, throwing knives, yeah. Alright, press LT to target. God, those were so much fun in the first game, I remember. I should get him first. Also, I like how some guy running along the rooftops Standing where your guard friend should have been does not raise any suspicion whatsoever. You're not allowed. Allowed. Not allowed what? 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 What was that? Oh, I'm sorry. If we cut him off there. I could totally fall in there. Well, that was easy. Well done, Ezio. We are in. Yes, we are. This way, man. I want you to distract those guards and keep them from raising the alarm. Hopefully, it will buy me enough time to find and silence Fieri. Va bene. Wait, nipote. Take a few of my men with you, just to be safe. Come join me once they're dealt with. Okay, so lots of guards. Press Y to make a higher group again leader. when you should follow. What's Vieri up to now? Whoa. No one knows. But something has him on edge. How else to explain all the patrols? I We're meant to be soldiers. Instead, he's turned us into nurses. Aye. We're not doing anything important right now, so I forgot to do some shopping, right? Okay, same thing. Wow, and it's more expensive here? Huh. Ooh. Yes, please. And what? Child. Thank you, sir. Angering the wrong sorts of people. And so now, we pay the price. Careful. What do you want to strike before him like Bernardo was? Poor bastard. I heard Vieri took his eyes. Camera, I'd like to be able to see what I'm doing, thank you. That was kind of fun. Well then. How's everybody doing? <clears throat> oh, thank you, Spoons. It'll definitely be a better way for you to get notifications about when I go live, for sure, because that always seems to work. Even if the emails from Twitch don't work, the Twitter interaction does. Never makes sense. All right, so I'm curious. What do these? I the highest quality, guaranteed. My prices reflect the exquisite workmanship of my eh, tradesmen. Never mind. I'm gonna say, let's see what one of these posters looks like that I could tear down to remove my notoriety. I'm assuming that's what that is.
Yeah. I feel like I should hit that viewpoint soon. There's a poster. <laughs> wow, 25% for one poster? That's amazing. Hey, Punkcake. Yeah, I guess it would always make sense to do your shopping back at your home base where, they're, uh, where they know you and give you the family discount and all that. Wow, they'll follow me. I thought they just told me I'm no monkey. Well, well, well. Looks like they are. Alright, Spoon. I will see you tomorrow. Or next time, I suppose. Alright, alright. This way, everybody. Alright, I'm gonna go get this lovely viewpoint so our map can look a little better. Damn, not fast enough. Alright, um, recent entries. I miss this one. San Gimignano. Named after San Geminius. Geminius. Wow. How about just saying Gemini? San, San Gemini, who supposedly conjured up a dense fog to save the city of Mordena from Attila the Hun. San Gimignano was founded in the 3rd century. The city grew from the 10th century onward as a stopping point along the pilgrimage to Rome. In 1199, once its citizens grew wealthy, San Gimignano separated from the bishops of Volterra and became self-governing. The city's distinctive towers were created as its wealthy citizens competed to display how much money was actually in their pockets. In its heyday, the city had 72 towers. But the plague of 1348 decimated San Gimignano. Without money for upkeep, the town started to fall apart. The council appealed to Florence, and Florence took control. And the Torre Rognosa, the thing we're about to climb. Connect the 13th century Plaza Vecchio de Podesta, the Torre Rognosa. Wow, man. I am not good at Italian. The Torre Rognosa rises 51 meters above San G. Podesta, power in English was the title given to the appointed head of most Italian cities. The Plaza Vecchio was the residence of the Podesta of San Gimi for about 100 years until... 1337. He moved across the square into Plaza Comunal. Why would Podesta simply abandon a tradition like that? Perhaps because the Plaza Comunal has the largest tower in San Gimi. Tower envy. Do not underestimate it as a force for change. That's funny. Um, probably Pancake. I don't know which ones at the moment. I'd have to go and check my follow list. Bell Tower. Cool. I feel like this will be useful for the rest of the mission, just to, you know, have a lay of the land. Oh yeah. Look at this. 
That's so much better. Ooh, Art Merchant. Hey, it's a doctor. All right, let's head back over this side where my guys are waiting. Backstabs for everybody. He sold us out to Svorza. Get him. Oh, and my sister. Guys. Are they gonna chase him through the whole fucking city? Looks like it. Well, you guys have fun. Whatever the hell that means. Oh hey, they came back. I'm guessing the guy ran far enough away that he spawned. Ooh. The moon is actually in the sky. Cool. Ezio! Your uncle's under attack and needs help. Go to him! Okay. I'm gonna go buy a map first. Aha. That's the one I wanted to get. The one for home. San Jimmy. Oh, no, wait, that's this one, isn't it? No, we're in Tuscany. A pleasure. Grazie for your business. Oh, misericordia, what has happened here? Who is he? Paintings? Ooh. Paintings. Venus rising. Venus sleeping. Venus and the Mirror. Simonetta Vespucci. Portrait of a Lady. Federico da Montefeltro. That's cheap. Sure. I don't know why I'm buying paintings, but okay. Oh. Venus paintings are expensive. All right. Grazie, and come again, sir. Thank you. Or. Can't out myself. I see a collectible or something like that, and it's like must get item. There's where we need to go up. I don't know, it's been a pretty quiet night in chat, Punkcake.
Doesn't look like there's any officials I can kill to get rid of my notoriety, but that's okay. Is that a poster? Or... I'm assuming it's a poster. Given the map. And the map suggests it's a treasure, but... Unless I'm seeing it through the wall, I don't know what the hell that is. Maybe it's just a feather. I don't know. I want to find out, though. Okay, it was just a poster. That is the strangest place to put a poster. You know, all the people who are going to be up here are looking for wanted posters to find out who they should not go near. Way to make sense, game. What is that? Huh. Power doesn't die. It's passed on. Franklin Delano Roosevelt Strategic Meeting 1944. Trying to see if I can figure out where that map is. Sort of looks like they're pointing at Japan. And I think that's the Philippines down there at the bottom. Yeah. Planning out the final push into Japan, I guess. Carried it with him, find his inheritance. Okay. Houdini beginning the Chinese water torture cell escape. So all these famous and powerful people actually had a piece of Eden with them the whole time. Is that what you're saying, game? Even Gandhi during the Salt March? Or is it that it was simply with them? Whether they knew it was there or not. Running, jumping to the door, up a ladder. And this truth thing's confusing, but cool to find at the same time. But it looks like a mountain, sort of. All right, let's go to our location. See, he's there. Plaza Comunale. Comunale, I guess. Plaza Comunale, San Jimmy's Town Hall, was built as the seat of the municipal government in 1288. 
As befits the City of Towers, one of the Council's earliest acts inside their new home was to construct Torre Grossa on top. The Podesta took up residence in the Plaza Comunale in 1337. Short one. Ah, good. Ah, Nipote, there you are. It seems my plan has hit something of a snag. Vieri's men ambushed us, and now we've got our hands full. My brothers and I will deal with these guards. I want you to go on ahead and root out that snake. See that justice is served. Find and kill Vieri de Pazzi. Okay. Sit tight. Come here. Come here. You're not going anywhere, buddy. No, no, no. Tori de Savuta Salvucci. In a city famous for its towers, the Salvucci family, in a display of 13th century might, erected not one, but two. And not only did they erect two, but they built them to be taller than the ruler of San Jimmy, the Podesta's tower. Despite a law made in 1255 that prohibited such an act of blatant brick and mortar style aggression. Outraged, the Podesta forced the towers to be cut down until they were smaller than his. <laughs> That's funny. Bring me your sick and wounded. I have done what I can. Thank you. To reopen the wound. I'm sure I have just what you need. Uh, somewhere in the back, perhaps. Interesting. I have no vision of this area. Ah, there it is. Hiding under the treasure. <clears throat> Go figure. Alright, you guys stay here. I kinda like this town. It's so tightly packed. You're pretty much always on a rooftop. Feather? No, it's just a poster. That's fine. Tor del Diablo. Diavolo. <clears throat> Probably built for medieval defense, the Tor del Diablo once held a walkway at its summit. The wooden spikes around the top held boards of the walkway in place. Depending on who you ask, the name The Devil's Tower comes from either the fact that lightning once struck the tower, or that the original owner left on a trip, only to come back and find it slightly higher than when he left. Okay. 